What if I told you you could build an HF vertical covering 10, 20, and 40 meters out of stuff you could buy from the hardware store? This time in the shop. So why would we want a vertical anyway? I mean, I've got a perfectly good 40 meter dipole up in the air, horizontal dipole. What's wrong with it? Well, really there's nothing wrong with it, but let's, let's take a look at it and uh, go over a few things. So here is my antenna. This is a model of the exact same antenna that I have up in the air. It's up about 28 feet. The ends are a little bit lower than that. And we can check SWR on this antenna. You can see it's centered at about 7.2 megahertz. And let's go ahead and model the rascal. And there we go. And you can see that uh, it's got 7 dBi gain, but it's straight up. The pattern is straight up into the air, which is great for contacting people that are local around me. We got this, you know, this one hop stuff that's 100 miles away or 50 miles away, so I can I can talk to guys over in Southern California and Northern California. I can talk to guys over in Arizona, Utah. And believe it or not, I can actually talk to people that are 70, 80 miles from from me here in Nevada as well. And the reason that is possible is because of the nature of 40 meters, the propagation is just really good for this sort of stuff, especially if you're running a dipole that's not very high up in the air. You get a lot of this straight up in the air pattern. You can actually see we have gain that's, you know, pointing skyward. So for NVIS or near vertical incident skywave or, you know, short hop stuff, it's, it's very good. But what if we want to use 40 meters to communicate to somebody that's across the country? Well, to do that, we need some really, really low angle radiation. So it needs to be down in this area some, somewhere here. And most hams will use 5 degrees as a reference point. So let's go to 5 degrees and see what we got. There's 5 degrees and you can see that we're down 10.81 dBi from uh, a positive 7 dBi gain straight up in the air. So this is not a very good long distance DX antenna. So what most people will do is they'll put up a vertical, a ground mounted vertical. Let's look at a ground mounted vertical and see what that will give us. So this is a ground mounted vertical, typical ground mounted vertical for 40 meters that has 16 radials. And these would be either laying on the ground or buried in the ground. Check the SWR on this antenna. You see it's quite good. Once again it's centered at about 7.2 megahertz. And let's check the pattern on this one. And you can see it's it's a much better pattern for DX. It's it doesn't have a lobe pointing straight up in the air, so that's a good thing. So this antenna might not be good for communicating with somebody that's 70 miles away, but somebody that's halfway across the country or all the way across the country, maybe maybe this would be a better antenna. You can also see that it's it's out of the box. It's a negative gain antenna. Verticals don't have a lot of gain, but the angle of the radiated signal is better for DX. Let's go ahead and check this one at 5 degrees. And you can see instead of being down 10.8 dBi, we're only down about 6.54 dBi. So for very, very long DX communications, this is actually a better antenna, even though the overall gain isn't that impressive. We start out with a negative gain antenna, and this is assuming really good ground with 16 radials. So I don't like radial fields. To me, this is just a disaster. All of these radials on the ground are buried in the ground. That's a big undertaking. It's a big, big undertaking. It's a big project. 
This is something that just doesn't appeal to me. So is there an option? Well, I think that there is. Let's go ahead and pull up the antenna that I'm going to build today. So this will be the antenna that I build. And you're actually only seeing half of it. This is the ground plane section of this antenna. So we have one vertical section, we have two radials, and it's going to be mounted to the roof of my house. And let's go ahead and check SWR on this one. Once again, this thing is tuned for about 7.2 megahertz. Let's check the gain of it. And just like the other vertical model, you can see it's got a nice DX pattern. We don't have a lot of straight up in the air stuff. Once again, it doesn't show a lot of gain, but at least we're slightly positive on this one. A ground plane is typically going to perform better than an antenna with buried radials. And let's go ahead and check it at 5 degrees. And you can see instead of being down 10.8 dBi, we're only down about 5.5 dBi. So compared to my horizontal dipole, this is going to be a better antenna for DX, for long distance communications. So that's the advantage of, of a vertical. There is one more advantage of a vertical, and that is local mobile communications. Remember that mobiles use vertically polarized antennas. So if you're talking to somebody that has a mobile rig, and frequency doesn't matter, it could be 10 meters, 20 meters, 40 meters, you need an antenna that's vertically polarized to be able to communicate with that person. So a horizontal dipole isn't going to work for local communications. So mobile to mobile, mobile to base, that sort of thing. DX, it doesn't matter because once the signal hops off the ionosphere and bounces back to Earth, the polarization is going to change anyway. Um, you can really notice this on 10 meters when 10 meters is hopping. You can hear the signal wane and, and get stronger and wane again and get stronger again. And what's happening is that polarization is constantly changing. So if you're using a horizontal antenna, when it wanes, it's actually switching to a vertical polarization and then it'll come back and get stronger. So for DX, polarization doesn't matter. It ends up being diagonal most of the time anyway. But for mobile to mobile communications, we want a vertical. So remember in the beginning I said you're only seeing half of the antenna. And the reason for that is that this is going to be a multi-band antenna. And the way that I'm going to pull that off is I'm going to put traps in it. So the top half of this antenna is going to have two traps in it. And then the bottom half of this antenna is actually going to be a dipole. So identity crisis antenna, it's both a dipole and a ground plane. So this section of the antenna is going to be resident on 20 meters. Let's go ahead and check the SWR. And it's a perfect dipole, 70-ish ohms, covers the entire 20, 20 meter voice band and we'll go ahead and plot it and you can see vertical dipoles work very well this one has a little bit of gain and the low angle radiation is pretty good it's minus 3 dBi gain so it's a little better than the 40 meter ground plane but uh, once again this is going to be a very good DX antenna now I don't really need a vertical 20 meter antenna but the advantage of running a 20 meter section of this antenna is I get to put an extra trap in line and that will shorten the overall length of it so and also this will also have a trap for 10 meters so below the 20 meter trap will be a 10 meter trap and it will also be resonant on 10 meters which means this antenna is going to have four radials it's going to have two radials that will work for 40 meters 
and it's going to have two radials that'll work for 10 meters. So let's go back to that antenna once again. And the reason I wanted to bring this antenna up is because it's only got two radials and you actually get an omnidirectional pattern with two radials. Let me change the pattern type. And this would be looking down straight from the top of this antenna and you can see that it is slightly squashed at the ends. It's not very much. It's down maybe half a dBi. But it is mostly omnidirectional. And the pattern, the strength, is going to be broadside to the, the radials. Normally that's not the case. Normally it would be in the direction of the radials. But since we're only using two radials, it's going to be broadside. So I would want to have the direction of communication to be perpendicular with the radial field instead of in line with it as you would normally do with like an inverted V or something like that or an L antenna. A little bit different but it's not huge but it is there. So this antenna is only going to have four radials and two of them are going to be 10 meter radials and they're going to be very short. So that eliminates that radial field of 16 buried radials which is is what I wanted. I don't even like having four radials in the air, but four radials is a much better solution than 16 buried radials, so I'll take it. If you want to build this antenna, you're going to have to build two traps. You're going to have to build a trap for 28 megahertz and a trap for 14 megahertz. And uh, you can refer to my previous vid videos on coax trap building, or another good resource that you can look up is this website. It's K7MEM. And I'll put a link to that in the in the comments below in the description below. But this is the best resource that I found for building coax traps. And there's online calculator you can put in your information, and it'll give you everything you need. It has multiple selections for coax types. When you're building coax traps, you can use any coax that you want. You can even use 75 ohm stuff left over from a TV or a uh, cable box or something like that. So any coax will work. I use RG58 almost exclusively because it takes less windings to achieve trap resonance with 58 than it does with something like 8X or a better coax that has better shielding. So, um, very good website, as I mentioned. Link in the comments below. So, to recap, I'm going to build a vertical, and it's going to be a combination of a ground plane and a dipole. So the ground plane will be covering the 40 meter and the 10 meter bands and the dipole section of this thing will be covering 20 meters. It's going to be a combination. And we're going to build this out of readily available components. The bottom half of this antenna is going to be EMT conduit. So you can buy this at Home Depot or Lowe's. It's going to be inch and a half with inch and a quarter nested inside of it. These radials is just going to be wire. Any wire will do. And the vertical part of this is going to be PVC. And it's a piece of 2 inch PVC, schedule 40. And then there's a piece of inch and a half that's nested inside of that. And then the, at the top, it's going to be uh, a Citizens Band stainless whip. So a 102 CB whip is going to be at the top of this thing. And the reason I chose to do that is stainless whips don't have a lot of wind resistance. If I didn't have the stainless whip, I would just put a piece of one inch PVC and continue up the remaining distance with a piece of one inch PVC nested inside of the inch and a half. And that would have worked fine. I just put a wire inside of the PVC and adjust the length of the wire to get resonance and it would have been okay. But since I had the 102 whip, I just went ahead and used that at the top because it does have less wind resistance than an equivalent one inch piece of PVC would have. So this antenna, other than the coax and the coax traps, all the stuff is readily available at the hardware store. And um, the top section is going to be trapped. There's going to be two traps inside of this upper section inside the PVC. There's going to be a, a 10 meter trap 
and there's also going to be a 20 meter trap. And the benefit of running traps is twofold. One, it's going to shorten the antenna, and two, it's going to multi-band the antenna. So right now you're looking at the 40 meter version of this antenna, and when we plot it, you can see we've got a nice 40 meter pattern. Now, when we trap it, what will happen when the antenna sees the top part of the trap, it's going to pass all frequencies except, except 20 meters. 20 meters will not be able to get past the top trap. So in effect, it's going to make this thing act like a shorter element. And when that happens, the pattern should not use the radials, it should use the mast or the EMT as the bottom half of its dipole. Let's see if that truly happens. And there you can see that we have our half wave dipole pattern. Very little current on the radials. Most of the current is on the upper and bottom half of this antenna. So the EMT will radiate and so will the wire that's inside of the PVC. So that's at 20 meters. Now at 10 meters we have another trap. And you can see it actually got shorter because at 28 megahertz, a 28 megahertz radio wave will not be able to get past this trap. So it will appear shorter to 10 meter communications. And when we model it, now you can see that most of the current is going on the short radials. So upper radiator, lower radiators, this is now a ground plane at, at 10 meters. So that's how this antenna is going to work. It's a combination of both a ground plane and a dipole. In the next video, I'll go over the construction details in part two. So stick around for that one. Thanks for watching.